Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games, my name is Simon. Today we're looking at a setup, play and view, the game Sansouci. Now, this is a two to four player game. It takes 40 minutes in duration. It is by Michael Kiesling, who I may have mentioned I have met before, who I met at the Spiel Fair 2018. Check out my playlist for Spiel. There's some other components in here, and if you're watching this in a short, head through to watch the full video on YouTube where there are education competitions, they are time sensitive, so they do disappear. You can also support the channel by Patreon. Occasionally there are, like I say, competitions, but they are time sensitive. And uh, by the way, there is something coming live though very soon. So you can choose a number of players. So a number of players, choose your color for whichever you want to be. It makes no difference. So I'm going to set up just one character over here and they're going to go on here. So uh, there's also things to check out such as Gamers Online. Also head through to Instagram where there's loads of pictures like this. Over 3,000, over 3,700 followers at time of recording. Also join the discussion on Facebook. So as I said, 4K recording to zoom in if you need to. This is basically Proto Azul. So Michael Keystein, designer of Azul, both him and his wife and myself and I, we pl play it before breakfast. So in this game, we represent gardeners and they're representing this palace of San Sousi, which is basically as grand as Versailles. It's slightly smaller, but it's more stuff, which is why it's regarded as important. And in this game, you're looking to have various structures and position them on your garden board. And I'm going to choose wisely to ultimately try and get the best points. So the only thing I haven't put out is that uh, token representing that you are going to be moving on this track. Obviously, once you get more than 50 points, you're going to take one of these and have never seen them happen. But you could get 100 as well. And depending on the players, you're going to put in the bag tokens representing if you're playing as a two, a three or a four. So just off the side here, you can see how that looks. These are twos, these are threes, these are fours. They're gonna go into this bag and then you can do the following. So here's are the two player ones. Now I personally do not use the bag. It's a lovely big bag, but it's so big, you try to fish around and grab stuff out. We tend to just shuffle them up and then flip them over and then draw them as we need to. It's a lot quicker that way. Even though obviously you do have to then uh, make sure they're all the right way up, or in this case down. So any questions, let me know in the comments best on YouTube. Also head through to subscribe, hit the notification bell and share, obviously thumb as well. And therefore you can catch up on the updates, including check out the description, like I said before, in YouTube. Okay, uh, if you are commenting, like I said, it is shared elsewhere, so keep an eye on it here. And make sure you've got obviously the respective pieces. So how do you score points? Well, everybody is gonna have an objective card. There are nine available. It's gonna shuffle these up and deal two. So I'll take these two as an example. So I'm looking to score pavilions, which do look slightly different. There's two different types. And also these kind of nice, nice boxed hedges as well. So raised borders. So they're gonna go out of play. Of course, everyone's gonna take two each. And there's always gonna be one left over, so don't reveal that. If you're playing as a four, everyone's going to take a colour as well. So one person's going to take blue, obviously very easy to pack away. You just chuck them next to each other. Everything else is there. And those can go over time being to show you this solo example. Again, you're going to shuffle up your deck, draw two cards, and then from this, pick something. Now, there is a wild in here too, but obviously you can imagine it's anything you like. On your turn, what are you doing? Well, you are taking one of these tiles. You can either take in this case from what I've drawn, either a blue or a red tile. Or, based on my other tile, I have drawn my other card, I've drawn this basically a round uh, structure, this round hedging kind of stuff. In Germany, I think it's called like a rounder or something like that, like the word round. Okay, a roundel. So, what can I pick? Remember, let's look at the first option. I could take this like phallic looking hedge or this pavilion. Now, I do not want to be scoring pavilions. Let's have a look. There's a blue pavilion down here, so it can go here. I have got blue one over here. I've got a red one, another red pavilion. And in fact, there are two red pavilions. So let me show you how this works, should it occur. So let's place a red pavilion. So let's take that and chuck it down here. Well, do you know what? I might show you how this works instead. So it's gonna go down here. And now I can move one of my gardeners along one. So I can move them down as far as they like, but they've got to start in the column they started in and they can't go back up from where they started. So you could have a guy come down here and then move over down here as long as they can legally get there. But for now, let's just move here and score two points. 
Now it's somebody else's turn. Should I have gone first? And it's basically who's done the most German thing. Now this is the second edition as well. Came out in 2022, picked up the Spiel Fair 2022. So check out my playlist for that. Check out my playlist, I had a setup plan review, the Mass Games playlist, the Family Rate playlist, and even I guess it's abstract strategy as well, because like Azul is not of a theme. So we're gonna replace the tile and somebody else is gonna go. Of course, they're gonna have different objectives. They've taken a turn, it's back to my turn. Let's see what I can pick. Well, of course, that got used. So I've got these two cards to play with, a wild, there we go. So in this instance, let me show you how this works. I will now take um, a red pavilion. So again, I could be starting over here. What else could I take? Anything over in this purple zone? Yeah, the purple zone could be quite good because if I place it here, I can whisk this all the way down to score three points. And then I draw another card. So you actually kind of can play this almost solo. As you can see, I'm sticking in the solo playlist and so how well you can do. So obviously we're gonna get through half the tiles though, so I'm gonna see everything. So again, you need to replace that. And now of course it's my turn again, let's say. So what can I pick? Well, in this case, I can't see any of these ones. I could pick this card, in which case I've got to place gray down here. Or because this does not exist here, I can pick anything I like. And let's show you how that would work. So let's say I take this one. Oh, well, I'll show you one other example first. Red pavilion, so we can go here. Remember, I'm trying to get down to the pavilions, to the bottom one, because you score at the end of the game, wherever your gardener gets for your respective special thing that you're trying to score, you score those points again. But let me show you how this can work. If you take something that is already there, you can stick it anywhere else in the same column or row, but it's gonna be flipped over. So if I put it down like this, then that now connects up for whatever reason, or this now connects up, or whatever I want to be doing. Having said that, you can never have your gardener land on it, so that's not good. So what I might want to do is place this over here, because now there's a path, and now I can score four points. And that's also good, if I happen to be on five to nine, because, well firstly, I now get another four points going down here. On a future turn, I could score one point, and then I could score four points, or maybe even I might be able to get a statue out and score two and three. And also, I'm getting closer, because now at the end of the game, should the game end now, I score four points, because my objective gets me four points. So again, you get more points where you ever get to. So that is how that works. You can flip a tile over, you can't land on it, but you can move through it. And this is quite handy, because I've now connected up. So where do you go? Do you start trying to get obviously a nice connection going, or do you try and get where you want your end guys to get to and just hope you can get to the right bits? And as the game goes on, as soon as you start taking the gray ones, if no one else is taking gray, well, only you are gonna be replenishing them. And in a game like Splendor, you almost might notice that you're replacing something and people are almost waiting you to replace a certain color so they can then hold back on those two, you know, the special kind of color cards and try and place them themselves. Also, you can keep an eye on everyone else's board, and if they haven't placed a grey statue, maybe it's because they're trying to get to grey statue, and all you want to do is try and get to you know, alternating areas, because that's where your bonus is, and you need to try and get your gardener there. Or it might be that they do already have it, and they're just trying to play it, so they can place it face down to connect something else up. So what else can you do in this game? Well, there's scoring, which I haven't talked about in detail. So if you get everything in a column, so it doesn't matter if it's flipped over, you score five points at the end. If you get everything in a row as well, or either or, then you score 10 points minus the value of that row. In this case, you're gonna score two points. Why? Because you score 10 points minus the row that value that you're in. So in this case, you're gonna score 10, it's a value of two, so you're gonna score eight points. Here, seven, six, five, four which makes sense because it's harder to get down the bottom. Equally, you know, you want to get down the bottom because of your bonus points. Let's talk about some of those in the expansions and then I'll talk about the review. So you have these play things. So four of these, you can play them any way you like. And these are called reward tiles. And what they're gonna do is if you cover it over with a regular Cypress tile, regular being of this kind of shape, then you're gonna score three points or two points or three points. Now this one is a gardener tile. So it must be placed with a gardener face down. So you need to almost be making sure that you can't place anything else there, over here basically, and then push it across, or here and pushing it across. Now, should a complete row column, like in the base game, be completely full, you can place anywhere you like, subject to obviously being able to fit. So sometimes you don't want to cover some off, and you can, like I say, look at your objectives cards first before deciding which way around you want to put it. So you can, that's one mini expansion, the first one. The second one is the Wild Boar mini expansion. These are little pig guys that you, uh, you kind of want to ensnare. 
maybe even kill them to get them off the board. So they all start off on the stair yellow, which looks very much like baleen whale plate, you know, their teeth, their sieves. And what you're trying to do is ideally capture it or surround it. So you're trying to get the respective thing, so maybe something like this, and placing that there because it's surrounding it. You're trying to surround it completely, so that's blue, so you should be able to get a blue tile. You're putting that there again. If you can start surrounding it, your final score will be basically everything that you score up, which is rows, columns, your objectives, plus obviously the points you've accumulated as you've gone throughout the game, but minus however many free spaces around your pig. So you'll be placing out obviously 18 tiles. So obviously there's still 20 points that you could be losing. So you kind of want to get this all surrounded. And if I manage to do this and this, then I would lose three points. So interesting. Also, you can be scoring a point every time that you land on the pig. So imagine you had that yellow, uh, if you had that yellow, where's it gone? Oh, here it is, the yellow stairs. If you manage to hit it like this, and then it can go somewhere else adjacent, which is really good. So now it's only obviously gonna score one point. Now, if you manage to land on that square, with in this case a purple staircase, you're gonna gain three points. So it's gonna come off the board, so you won't be able to bounce it around anymore, but equally you're not gonna lose any points from it being wild and free. So that's how that second expansion works. So let's talk about the reviews. So obviously you can mix them both together. It really changes play with the boar one. I prefer the boar one because it really does kind of go, oh, I kind of want to focus on that and it doesn't impair my game too much. So my rating has actually improved uh, every single game I've played this actually. I've played with every single color. I've played probably with all the objectives. I've played both sides of these boards. Of course, all the boards are unique. I'll quickly show an example. So if you clear this stuff off, you can see that they're all slightly different. So they're all they're all different, which is great. So there's eight combinations. I've also played, like I said, both of those mini expansions. I said you can combine them as well. Uh, the If you do use this bag, strangely, you can't then chuck it back in the box. So you do need to be taking your tiles out as well, which is an interesting thing to choose to do. It just doesn't fit in otherwise. Uh, again, the objective cards are nice. So my rating for this has been steadily climbing from about a five to a six to a seven. So slightly more than a seven to more like a sort of a 7.5. It's just, you might get a bit of luck, but it has that right element of being really curious around, do I try to connect up a route? Do I want to just, you know, have a nice bed later on to score loads of points? Or do I st you know, start scoring early and seeing how I go? And do I just drip feed and get a point, then two points, then three points? Or do I jump in to get four points and hope to get five and hopefully get something else to get me another five points or something like that? So it's very interesting. Like I said, very much pro to Azul. I do prefer Azul, just to let you know, and uh, give it a nine out of 10. So it's not, it's not a, a replacement for Azul in my opinion, but it's definitely something that if you like Azul, and you like the approach of this, I've had uh, no qualms of anyone playing this. I know some people uh, with color blindness, I mean, you do have these different petals, but they're still very similar. I didn't even notice that they were specifically that different. So uh, there is some elements of how they have improved it. I don't know how many more differences there have been compared to the base game. Like I said, it does have those mini expansions in there though. So yeah, it's a swift game to play. It's enjoyable. It definitely has this moorish feel that you kind of want to keep on playing more and more of it. And I have played multiple times in a day. I've played it before breakfast myself, like us all. So it's definitely got some pull power going on there. And hopefully you found this of interest. Like I said, this has been Sansusi, an interesting name to pronounce. I don't know if I'm going to see this on a crossword conundrum and uh, on countdown, which is a bit of a, I guess, a, a pardon the pun there on that. But there we go. Very nice box. Quite a scary looking woman here. Nice kind of fourth wall going on. And uh, yeah, again, as always, please do let me know your thoughts. But for now, back to the table.